You know the funk don't always give you what you want, but it'll give you what you need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We never left. Yo, we back. NHFA in your face. Bringing you something good to your ear hole, y'all. Check it out. It's our time, our time to shine. It's our time, our time to grind. It's the phone. What's up, what's up, what's up? How y'all doing? Another episode of Funk from the front seat. Today, live from the D, y'all. It's coming in hot. I got my man, my funk brother from the Godzilla cave. Gabe Godzilla Gonzalez is in the house today, hanging out with us on Funk from the front seat right here on IBM.TV. So y'all don't go nowhere. Sit back. I'm going to bring my man up. We coming in hot. Y'all know how we do. Everybody get your hands up. Throw them from side to side. Ha, ha, ha. Funk from the front seat all the way live, y'all. Welcome, 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 welcome. What's up? How you doing today? Ah, oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You know, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, uh, much, much man, respect, that theme man. song is... That theme song is funky as fuck, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes, we yeah. got a little something out a little bit. We you got, got a little something out Let me play with that. Yeah, okay. Hey, I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to send it to you, man. Um, yeah. How you doing, man? First of all, peace and blessing to you and your family. How, how you doing, up there? How How's your family, man? I mean, everybody is good for the most part. Um. You know, I lost my uncle Mickey, man. Uh, Mickey Atkins, you know, original Funkadelic keyboard player at the beginning of all this crazy mess. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, it's been rough. You know, I lost a cousin last week and uh, another friend a week before. But uh, there wasn't COVID situation, but still, you know, you know, yeah. So it's yeah. kind of rough, you know. This whole yeah. year has been like, you know, so just to be here, I'm like, it makes you count your blessings every day, you know? Don't so, it? Yeah, like, it does. No. Yeah, it does. I know, I know, um, <clears throat> you know, the way, the way, um, you know, because I know, and, and just a little tidbit, my cousin died. She was one of the first ones to die in New York back in January. So I know that feeling. Wow. Um, and you know, I pray, I pray for all your losses, man. And and you know, they're guardian angels for us now, man. And on on the lighter side of it, um, you know, you're here, I'm here, and we can continue, you know, their legacy. And I saw the thing about, you know, um, Mickey Atkins, and um, you know, I was touched by that because, um, you know, people forget, you know, Funkadelic had to start somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and parliament and all of that stuff and a lot of the guys that we now pay homage and tribute to you're doing it you know Keith Jackson does it all the time um, you do it on your show on Wednesday nights you know Philip Colley does his show um, you know and, and Donna Sneed and, and all the legacies you know everybody's trying to still hold it and that's the beauty of the funk that's what first attracted me to it man um, again we're hanging out on funk from the front seat I'm with my funk brother my friend my mentor um, you know, fellow musician and all that good stuff rolled up oh, into one. Uh, Mr. Gabe Gonzalez from the D. Um, and again, you know, you and I was talking off air a minute ago, man. And, and I saw your dog. And I got to tell you, I, I love animals. I just live in an apartment now, so I can only have fish, you know, because dogs and cats cost me extra, man. But you got a beautiful <laughs> dog, man. That's what's up. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Yeah, she's, she's all right. Show. Yeah, <laughs> so, so, so back in the day when you first was coming up underneath this whole funk mothership thing, um, and you was into other music as well, obviously, you know, you're an amazing drummer, um, you know, you, you know, hang out with Dennis Chambers and, you know, some of the greats. What prompted you to know that this was going to be your line, you were cut out for it, and you were going to actually do it and go full head? Uh well you mean when did I yeah actually... no, in general you know you know when you started out we all start somewhere 
So what prompted you to go ahead and just say, listen, this is what I'm going to do. I feel it in my bones. This is who I am, you know, when you was coming up. Because I know yeah. uh, we all start from somewhere. Like I said, I just want to know how you started in this whole funk thing. Uh, well, the funk thing, well, in my neighborhood, I got, uh, it was a couple drummers that, you know, I will hear them practicing in the basement playing the records and stuff. And there's one cat, uh, he was funky, man. This cat, Jack, he was kind of like one of my first teachers. And, uh, my aunt was really my first teacher. She was into a lot of jazz and, you know, she had a lot of records in her house and she could swing and play blues. And, you know, her kids just listened to a lot of funkadelic and stuff. And I was always around it. And, you know, in my house, wherever I also I went to, everybody had funkadelic. It was like a thing that seemed to follow me, which was weird. You know, so I just knew if you had that album in your house, you must be cool or everything is hip. And, you know, music was like, uh, you know, in those households, I grew up, you know, well, I'm, uh, you know, Puerto Rican and black, but I grew up with the black side of my family, which is my mother's side of the family. So, uh, you know, it's just so much music was around and even Led Zeppelin, which, you know, for me was deep because yeah. even though they were a white rock group, uh, I think a lot of black people embraced them because oh, yeah. they had, you know, soul and, and they were funky, you know. Yeah. And it was the same here with Grand Funk Railroad, which was another influence, yeah. you know, musically, um, because they are from here. And actually, they would gave Led Zeppelin a run for their money a couple times. I heard some stories but about their oh, manager, yeah. Led Zeppelin's manager. He wasn't no joke. He was a straight-up gangster. And uh, they kicked their ass one night, and I was – that was the last time that happened. So anyway, uh <laughs> Yeah, right, right. Cause they didn't want that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was it. But uh yep. yeah, no man, you know, Motor City Bad Boys, man. I'm I'm around that every day, man. Uh, you know, my my main gig, I uh the Grandy Ballroom is like a mile from there, so I pass it every day. So I, I you know, it's like I wasn't born yet but i can imagine just like when i pass that building i just can feel it i get chills just looking at it like you know that you know the chambers brothers and the cream and hendrix and all these people perform right here in this ballroom right in my neighborhood where i grew up in and i you know by the time i was old enough it was already closed yeah down. but there's a possibility that they got some people that have a foundation and they're gonna open up i want to give a shout out to my man john sinclair too it's his birthday today Go for it, man. He's about 79 to 80. He's the, you know, we gave him an award with George because he was the MC5's manager. So, you know, they used to tour with Funkadelic and stuff like that in the early days. But anyway, man, not to get far off. But, yeah, I got into it, man. I just, I was always around it. So it just kind of naturally happened. Uh, it's weird. Like, literally, I was always around it. Um, yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned that here. ballroom because we in New York had that same feeling about the Apollo. You know, right. you pass it and then and see and, and and then sometimes when you're coming up, you're like, Okay, don't worry, I'm gonna be in that building one day performing. It just right. draws you, you know, right. and, and yeah. you were was there, um, you know, obviously, you know, United Sound up in Detroit. Um, we were always jealous in New York <laughs> because we were like Damn, we can't get to Detroit, and that's where the hub is. You yeah. know, what I mean? <laughs> we knew all the all the all the right, We right. knew United Sound was the hub. We used to see it on the albums, you know. Yeah. And, I, and my father was a minister. Yeah, you uh, ain't going to Detroit. You know, I was like, but Dad, <laughs> that's where they are. I know they're from Plainfield, New Jersey, but they're recording in Detroit. I gotta oh, get there. No, man, no, listen. You don't even know what you're saying, man. That shit is okay. I, I get it. I'm, I'm, dude. I'm feeling the fuck out of that. And the thing is, dude, I used to ride the bus with my grandmother because she didn't drive and stuff. And that's who raised me when I was a kid. So I remember us leaving like the department store downtown Hudson's, and we would be on the bus. Yeah. And. Man, look, we would pass United. It would go past United. The bus would. And my ass would be trying to hop off the bus. Like, I need to, because I would see people standing on the porch and out there. And she was like, boy, what are you doing? You know, and grabbing me. And she's about to smack me upside. 
I was like, I got to get off for a minute. I'll get back on. I'll see you later. Like, she went out. <laughs> and meanwhile, I was holding the damn albums. Like, I had just bought them because they used to be at the Kresge store, which was like Kmart. They used to have all the Westbound stuff in the dollar bins, man. Like fucking like Ohio players, Funkadelic. Yeah. So you could buy them out for 2 and $3, man. So I had like two and three copies and I wore them all out, man. I was that seriously into that shit. Like it was heavy to me. And then, um, mm-hmm. you know, I seriously tried to get off the bus. And later in high school, one day through me and Ab Fiddler, uh, I ended up going to United for the first time. And uh, they were producing, Georgia producing Otis Day and the Knights. Um, yeah. You know, the Animal House cats and, and uh, Bernie was in there. And I was like, man, I went with my cousin who was a keyboard player, my other homie. And I was, we was determined out to get in there. And of course, man, we just got the porch access. They didn't, you know, you wouldn't, it was a closed session, especially if Bernie was there because, you know, nobody yeah. would listen. But uh, I eventually gained access one day with Clip, who got me in the band. And all this happened, I was still in high school, which is amazing. It was like, I can't tell you, you know. So uh, I was a sponge, and, you know, I learned a lot, man, um, you know, from them. and Yeah, man. Uh, Clip especially, you know, he taught me, like, a lot about programming uh, drum machines. Yes, that's Gary right. Yep. He was, he was as early well. Was. And Gary yes, stayed sir. with me. Gary uh, recorded a lot of stuff with me, and uh, – I had a little raggedy guitar. He would play it, and, you know, he would make it magic on it, man. Uh, I used to drive Eddie Hazel around. Just I just got so many deep memories, you know. But, yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, uh, which prompted me to start my own thing, you know. So that's kind of how yeah. all that happened, you know. We, we're going to get into that because the, the first time, you know, I saw Enema Squad, again, you know, y'all came to New York. Wetlands was still open, and, you know, yeah. Black Rock Coalition was popping and all that good stuff, right? And so I was like, and everybody was like, the buzz was enemy squads in the house, right? So I was all like, right. oh, okay, let me check them out, you know. And at the time, Nappy had hadn't started, you know, and I'm still doing corporate wedding stuff and all that, but I was a fun kid born into it. And I saw you guys, man, and and I was like, oh, they on some other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> hey, we the generation, we the product of that, you know, because yes. we yes. grew up watching that, yes. you know. Yes. And, you yes. know, being young and hungry, we was like, but that's the thing. Even though New Funk, not to cut you off, even though New Funk no, no, was coming not. in, yeah. we still embrace that early Funkadelic shit, the taboo that, you know, the early days shit. We didn't really play me deep in one nation and all that shit we was doing i want to know if it's good to you and yes free your yes. mind and yes uh yes. you know just uh you know just the obscure raw shit which yes, uh, yes, exactly. yeah man exactly. well exactly. as i was the spot man we used to tear it up there was you uh was that when uh funky opened up for yes. us yes yes see and i was at all those shows i didn't have a band yet and I yeah. wasn't never by the stage because I was always stepped back by the booth with Craig Ijamo, and I would be observing. And then he asked me to put together a band when we did George Clinton's birthday party. And that's how All I right. met the clone. And that's how I really got a chance to be funkin'. Y'all wasn't right. on that show. But um, I just want to give a shout out. Every now and then, Gabe, you'll see me wave hi to your fans. Sonia Murphy told me to tell you hello. Dr. Brooks yeah. is in the house. You'll, you'll see me, you know, wave. Again, we're hanging out with my funk brother, Mr. Gabe Gonzalez, um, you know, from Detroit, spending a little time with us today on Funk from the Front Seat right here on IBM.TV. When Wetlands, brother, let me tell you, CBGB's in Wetlands, it was like I lost a member of my family when those spots closed up, you know? Yeah. Because that's all we had, you know? And then, you know, we had a few spots on Long Island, but... When when you guys used to come through and, and we'd see you, you guys were like our heroes because y'all was already doing it so hard. And I was like, okay, now I, I learned. It was like college for me watching y'all. It really was. That's why I always oh. tell you that, man. Um, you're an amazing, amazing spirit. So, oh, and I was you. Like, um, you know, you, you did that. And obviously, P-Funk All-Stars traveling around the world. You know, you're, you said you were a sponge. And, um, you know, hanging out with, um, the cats on the mothership. When I first met you, officially, 
It was upstate, and I ain't going to say where, undisclosed location, but you know what I'm talking about, upstate New York. Yeah, New York. And, and we was just hanging out, and I was like, yo, this is just a regular dude, man. And we sit by the car smoking, you know, talk about girls and all that stuff, you know. And I, and I really genuinely enjoy, you know, your, 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 your love for, for life and all that stuff, man. Um, remember I had that red Trans Am? <laughs> I used to drive. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't remember, but I do remember hanging out with you. Um, yeah, man. And I will I used say, to drive to the rehearsals. Keith Jackson yeah. says hello, Gabe. Hey, hey, that's my man. He had a, we hey, did it know? up last night, man. We, hey, we hey, went hey, in. Hey, <laughs> hey, I if they're yeah. not a show on Wednesday nights, they better be, cause you be doing some phenomenal funk mixes. I, I, oh, I don't man. Open Thank you, man. on the thread, but I always listen with my headphones on because your right. mixes are phenomenal. So how did you get into that old DJ thing? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, well, thank you, first of all. And secondly, I've been, well, DJing since like 1981 when I was a teenager. I was probably like, you know, 12, 13 and it was a thing in my hood. Like, if you wasn't gang banging or, you know, and I did a little bit of both. I was in the gang, Notorious, 8 Mile, Smurfs or whatever. And it was, you know, just, it was stupid. But uh, Detroit was real territorial. And um, and everybody was only a few miles away. So a lot of the kids, you know, uh, you know, our parents preferred us to stay in the house. So which is kind of how the music thing happened for me because all my friends was, was yeah. thugging and fighting, but you know they'd be like, "Oh, let's get game." And the gay, they like, "Nah, he doing his music shit." They just stopped bothering me because they knew yeah. at some point I pulled away from that street shit because I was really heavy into it. Like I was the leader of one gang, and uh, anyway, not to get off and all that, but it just no, made remember that's, that's all that. And I'm just grateful that my life turned around because I was young. I didn't, I didn't know, and it's just your environment, man. You suck all that shit in, especially in Detroit, because. You know, me being who I was, you know, a lot of kids was always trying to test me because I was a light-skinned kid and, you know, curly hair. So I used to get picked on a lot. But uh, at some point, <laughs> all that stopped happening because I turned into another person. And then, yeah, 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 dude, yeah. hey, don't don't mess with that dude because he, he, ain't, he ain't having it, et cetera, et cetera. And then once I started playing drums, I even gained more respect from the older thugs and hoods because they thought that was cool that I played drums and shit. So they almost was like, that's good. Somebody's doing something yeah, with us that ain't out here, you know, stealing cars and blowing up shit and doing dumb shit because, it's, you know, I don't know. I did all that, and I'm just thankful and blessed because karma's real. Believe me, I done had my ass kicked many times, and every time I always reflect on something stupid that I did to know that, okay, God, I get You're it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, lesson, but I bro, need that. Learn. I needed that, you know? Yeah, every lesson but, is a learning. I went through mine, too. You know, in New York, you got, you know, the major cities, you got to run up against that. And like you said, yeah. people test you, and, you know, yeah. and again, you brought up something very crucial. The last generation before us, the old heads, if they saw that you had something special, they would deter you from hitting the street, even if you was halfway there. And the same thing used to happen with us. They, they used to be like, no, don't shoot dope. You know, don't get right. caught up in this. You know, you, you got your music. Focus right. on that. You know what I'm saying? And, and again, like you, you know, a lot of us were like glad that they steered us in that direction, man. Um, yeah. And, you know, and your spirit led you to where you are. You know, you're a warrior. I know. I know. We've talked about some things, man. And oh, I'm going to yeah. share this with people that don't know. One night I was having it, and I called his brother, and within seven minutes he responded to me, um, got back to me, and touched me in such a way to help me get through it. Um, you know, because I reached out, and I needed to reach out to somebody. And that's all I'm going to say. But I was having because a lot of people know it's no, no thing. They know I suffer from depression a lot. And when I reached out to you that night, um, I'll never forget it, brother. Let me tell you, it brings tears to my eyes right now to say thank you because you reached out to me within seven minutes and got back to me and, and asked oh, me man. and told me it was going to be all right. And that, to me, is bigger than the music. That's what connects funk. And I just wanted oh. to share that story. And I don't mean to embarrass you, but I, I really had to share no, that story. Hey, look, man, I got goosebumps right now just from you saying all that. I mean, I don't even know what to I mean... 
I'm um uh, I don't know how to say it. Just my being, it's it's just something special, and I'm connected to God, and I learned that because I've been in many situations where I, I I wouldn't be here, but I know He made it possible to protect me from certain things to keep me here, and you know, after you do so much bad stuff in your life when you're younger and you're stupid you just realize and you mature and you get older and you realize life ain't even bought all that so that's right that's yep. really what it is to me and i have suffered from depression so hey when i know somebody else is i i understand and that's nothing better than the because i you know a lot of people will think and say they understand but i really do i just lost a friend two weeks ago who killed herself Beautiful girl. She was a young artist, you know. And uh damn, you know, I'm, I don't want to lose it right now, but I'm just it didn't even really hit me till now. And I went to the funeral and I didn't even cry. But that's how 2020 has made me. I'm numb to death because there's so many people dying. I don't have time to grieve because before I do, another one dies. And yeah. it ain't really and it ain't really from the whatever this bullshit that they manufacture, it's more or less death period, you know, because like I said, I, I've lost a lot of people to stuff that's not related to that. So anyway, yeah. um, you know, no, nah, man, I was glad to be there for you. And I'm just like that, man. Like, uh, you know, cause people have been there for me that I wouldn't believe a lot of times that would even give a fuck about me, to be honest with you. Yeah. And that's the thing that's weird about life. You just don't know who really cares. And who, that's right. Because, you know, I don't rely on my family as much no more because of the things I went through. But that's another story. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. one thing I discussed with my actual cousin the other day. Blood yeah. don't make you family, period. That's so, right. And I learned that. You know, P-Funk, that's my family. You know, and I might not, you know, see them or whatever. But no matter what, that's always my family. Because when I was on the road and I got sick or something, they took care of me. When I was, wasn't doing right, my uncles, Ray and all them, they was, hey, boy, what you doing? They was going to beat my ass. When I did something I shouldn't did, Skeet and all them guys, they they was going to, hey, what are you doing? They, It was like some love that I never really realized, like, like wow, these dudes really care, you know, about me. And, and so that made me really start caring about myself more. And once yeah. I did that, yeah. That was the secret, man. I really didn't care about myself a lot. I mean, and that's because of growing up the way I was and just wild. And and then plus, when you're young and I'm a young funkadelic, you know, that's the arrogance that comes with that. So, you know, I'm the drummer. Here I am, 25, 26, playing arenas, pocket full of money, you know, knowing girls in every city coming to pick me up. It's just, it was a lot for me and a lot for the people around me. And it was just like... I had to just decompress, and and that's one of the reasons I stepped away from the band because it's you know it was overwhelming a lot of it. So yes. I had to spiritually find myself, and yes. um, you know yes. then I once I did that, I finally released my record, and you know the Enemy Squad, United State of Mind, and um, you know, uh, that 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 um that's that quote that you said about family, the funk family, even the fans or whatever. And Dr. Brooks said, Hey, what's up on disco kid. Uh, for time yeah, time, time for chiming in. I'm hanging out today with my main man, Gabe Gonzalez. Oh boy. Is he lit up um, with his music. <laughs> on IBM.TV funk from the front seat. I'm number nine. I'm your host. That thing you brought up about family. I've never met a funketeer. Color, race, creed, gender, don't matter. That didn't love another Funketeer. I tell people all the time, if the world was full of Funketeers, there'd be no war. There'd be little scraps. There'd be no war because funk is about love, about giving. Like you said, it was bigger than the music. It's your family, you know. And those of us on the outskirts, I call us the outer ships. We're not the mothership, but we're the outer, those outer ships. We felt that trickle down. And that trickle down, I think, is what makes the whole thing kind of work because there are so many cats out there like Brooks, like Sonya Murphy, you know, like all these people, Larry Funkster Jones, you know, all these people that just are are, are funk family to me, like you are. You my funk family, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's funny, you said something off air earlier. You said you was already wearing your mask last time I saw you. <laughs> I was at the Funketeers ball. You was like, man, I'm way ahead of this stuff. But I always tell people, hey, 
wear the mask, use your hand sanitizer, and just try to stay safe. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So Godzilla Radio, tell us a little bit about that and how people can find you and listen to you, where they can find you at. Well, it's P-Funk Radio every Wednesday night, 10 p.m. to 1, or, you know, you know, it's usually until I'm finished, but it's somewhere between that 1, 1.30, sometimes 2, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Whenever, whenever Keith is, you know, he ain't too tired or, he, you know, he's feeling it. We'll go a little longer if the thread is jumping in. Um, you know, I've just been paying attention a lot to, uh, to everybody's thread. And uh, Phil, you know, I give him credit because he kind of started the party thread thing because I know the radio show thing. I know I used to do interviews on Ricky Vincent's station in KPFA when I was touring with P-Funk in the 90s uh, and with Bernie Worrell. And so I was aware of it. And uh, I actually started a little bit in radio in high school. There was a high school station here in Michigan, Oak Park, Michigan, where a lot of Cats I would hang out with uh, not far from uh, Detroit on the other side of 8 Mile there. And uh, in the 80s, you know, I used to go in with my homie. who was like a famous DJ. Now this cat, Mark, uh, Scott Kenton and Mark, they, you know, they big time playing in Dubai and all that type of shit. So they had a show back then. And uh, we was into like Depeche Mode and all this weird 80s, you know, <laughs> Cocktail right, right, Twins, right. like the, you know, the 80s, like. And even a lot of weird shit, which is considered punk, like, well, not electric, like, raw punk, like, early punk, but, yeah, punk, like, you know, like, the Flying Lizards and shit like that in the class, and, yeah, yeah. You know, so, I just was always absorbing all kind of weird ass, I used to try to find weird radio stations at night, uh, off the grid, and I would hear some of the baddest shit that, you know, of course, you couldn't hear, and we grew up with uh, one of the hell of a most hell of a DJs in the world, Electrify Mojo, who broke Prince's record, uh, a lot of P-Funk records. He played Needy two weeks before they sent it to be pressed in with Warner Brothers just to try it out on the city, straight from the pressing plant. So Detroit was famous for we had shit. And by the way, if you didn't know, I was actually born in New York. So I'm from New York, but I grew up in Detroit. So I always had that little bit of uh, New York edge about me where I was like, you know what I'm saying, a little more aggressive and, you know, so, and hungry for it. So it kind of, you know, timing is everything. And I'm blessed. I'm thankful for it. My P4 family and George and everybody and and Bernie, especially for taking me under his wing when I, when I made, you know, my transition from moving from there. It was like, you know, they would always say, you know, uh, when you graduated, you were Bernie now. So I took that as, like, I really went to P-Funk University. You know what I mean? So. I noticed that because when I saw you guys upstate, and, and, the, and the one thing you told me, because Amp was playing, and it was the day before Bernie had got there, even though his equipment was already there. Yeah. And, and I was talking to you on the side, and you said, man, you said, it's lit now. You said, the first thing you told me is, wait till Bernie gets here tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I came the next Man, day. look, it was yeah. magical. And actually, I got amp on that gig, but you know what I'm saying? Because okay. uh, I remember uh, Judy calling me, which is, I see they, I'm wearing the purple, so I'm representing my woo today. You know what I'm saying? Punk the Duck Studios, I got to give a shout out to them in New York City because they always let me do my thing up there, you know. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We, we making some things happen. And, uh, you know, that's what's going to happen, man. Uh, I'm trying to you know, continue to do these radio shows. Uh, this week I got Baby Funk. She's the uh, lady of uh, Jimmy Ali, Parlet Basis. So she'll be on okay. the show. Okay. okay. And uh, some other surprises. Billy Bass, uh, you know, he had to reschedule. So he may pop in. I'm just waiting. I don't rush him because, you know, he <laughs> he's Billy Bass, the great bass master. So, but I've been talking to Billy. <laughs> Every other day, he may cuss me out and shit on the damn air, but I already told him, like, man, whatever, man, just be you. That's why I've been, he the only guest been giving me problems. Everybody else, come on, cool. It's always my brother and shit. Like, like man, cool. No, I, you know. But, yeah, no, man, I've been uh, checking everybody's shows out, man, and for a long time. And um, that kind of made me uh, – do what I do, man. And every week I listen. I may not be on the thread and listen, but I try to check out everybody's show just to see what they're doing. It actually 
inspires my show, believe it or not, because I know where not to go or where to go, because I might either follow up with somebody's show from something I heard, and or I'll just go left field on everybody, you know, and just, like, this week, you know, I had to do a tribute to Rocco Steele, you yeah. know, the great bass master, you know. So yeah, I always try to pay tributes, you know. That's what I always did, even before I had the radio show, I was doing the mixes and um, DJing paying tribute to people because, you know, at some point I was always making mixtapes forever, but my thing was, um, you know, I didn't want to uh, just be playing music. I wanted it to be a theme to it or a storyline where it catches on, just like when I do my time travel segment. I always lead up to my special guest. If a lot of people haven't paid attention to that, it's always like my last song of that segment is – whoever my special guest is. So, right, you know, right. so I try right. to link all that and then so on to the rest of the night. And then I'll close it out with a special mix or something, which, you know, and I do that on uh, all the DJ shows, which is amazing. They all come to me. Philip Kiley has had me do his show when he was down last year, uh, which was an honor. And I remember, um, yeah. I remember yeah. Yeah. Keith has always played my mixes and, and uh, things on his show for years, for at least, you know, I've been on P4 Radio for 20 years now, so he's always played little exclusives or songs I sent him or little things I put together. So, you know, uh, and that's a hell of a platform. I appreciate him for giving that because P4 Radio is another strong one holding it down. And, um, you know, Robin Denson Austin, I can't forget her because she's one of, one of the first ladies on Spreaker and first lady DJs uh, on this funk thing we doing that has her show. So I got to give a shout out to her because she, you know, and um, I do exclusive mixes on there as well as Funkster Jones. So so that's my thing. I try to do my part to keep the funk alive. That's basically it. Hey, you do it. And I want to tell you, here we are hanging out on Funk from the Front Seat with my brother, my funk brother. I love him to death, Mr. Gabe Gonzalez, you know, from the hey, Godzilla hey. Um, P Funk drummer, you know, P Funk radio DJ promoter. A lot of people are signing in. I want to say hi to all the fans out there, Sonia, David Brooks, everybody. Um, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you for always supporting us here at IBM TV. Um, you said something interesting, um, you know, about about listening to other shows and 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 things of that nature. When when I listen to some of your mixes, I can hear that deepness and how you pay an homage and tribute. And and even when you did the one for 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 Donna Sneed and Benevolent Funk and Boogie Munson, when you had did that that Night of the Thumposaurus, I don't know what even the name. All I know is I saw something with Thumposaurus mixed by Gabe Gonzalez. When I heard, when I yo yo, I was mad. I even this is what I did. I called uh, Keith. I said, Keith, send me a copy of that. Right, right, right. <laughs> I said because that. Blew me away, and I gotta tell people how hard you work. I called you this morning. You like, oh no, hold on, I'll call you back. I'm working on something for Robin. You was grinding this morning before this show, you know. And I know you yeah. got other things to do today. So this brother, let me tell you something. He's on it. He's on it. Keeping that funk alive, man. Um, speaking of of a lot of stuff you went through, and here we are with Gabe Gonzalez, my funk brother. I love him to death, man. If you had any advice for a lot of the younger heads coming up. Not necessarily in the funk world, but trying to get in this game. Um, what what would you tell them to to give them a, a little bit of of um, confidence or not not really confidence, but what would you tell a young person to say, "Hey, bro, I'm trying to get in this game. What is, what should I know?" You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I actually hang with a lot of the young musicians here in Detroit. Um, a lot of the young cats and. Um, <laughs> There's some bad cats here, as it still as it always ever was. Um, but I do notice is, uh, no matter where I go, a lot of the younger ones, you know, um, they know they're good, so they got a little bit of a big head and ego. And, you know, and I get it, because I was once one of those little knuckleheads when I was coming up around it, where you know, I was cocky, like, yeah, you know. and, and But you got to, at some point, humble yourself and, you know, stay true to your craft. And if you're doing it for the money, I don't think it's good. it will last. I think for me, it's always been, yeah, um, it's my passion. So the money eventually came because I, you know, hey man, I grinded hard for a lot of years before I became P4 drummer, and 
I went through a lot to get that job. People don't know. I just appear like I put in like at least six or seven years of fucking work. You know what I'm saying? I would drive cash around. They would stay at my mother's house, run phone bills up to $800, $900, call her Archie Ivy. I got lots of crazy fucking stories I could tell you. Because it, it wasn't always super great. But at the same time, all that shit made me. Because like Gary Shice to say, I used to say, hey, I'm blessed to be here. And Gary Shice to say, no, motherfucker, you earned this shit. And I'll be like, wow, okay, you're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so there it is, you know, just why I can talk the shit I do because I can afford to. So That's right. you know, I ain't even tripping about it because it ain't to me that the bottom line at the end of the day, I'm just blessed. I ain't no better than nobody else and I ain't trying to be. I'm just me, you know what I'm saying? And exactly. everybody is something special. You know, we all got something. Like Sly said, everybody is a star, you know. And yep. George, everybody got a little light under the sun. So with that that's being right. said, that's you right. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's what it is about the funk. It's always been spiritual. Ever since I heard I Just Want to Testify, and I used to hear, and my dad was a Baptist minister, so I'm a PK. <laughs> you know what I went through, right? Yeah. I rebelled early. I heard Testify, came home on a Sunday and was playing that. Right? I'm seven, eight years old. Yeah. Right? And I said, well, Dad, they say testify in church. You know? So, and Parliament, <laughs> I was like, well, this ain't the Temptations, because it had a little nasty to it. Yeah, I think this yeah. is Motown, the normal Motown stuff, right? And my older cousins, they, they used to buy 45s, and, and I used to listen to all that music, man. I grew up, I was so fortunate. Jazz, gospel, harmonizer for Mahalia Jackson, my mother died when I was seven, but before that, she used to take me to the Apollo. So that's how I seen all those people live. Wow. I heard them testify, and when they said, ooh, luscious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That word, George knew how to use them certain words, and it was yeah. like, luscious is actually a word in the dictionary. So yeah. Like, you know, but George, like he said, he never believed in cuss words, and because it's like, nah, look. Even Christians, people still say, well, you know, they got ish. Like, they, everything is ish now, black ish or whatever. We know what ish means. That's shit. So you yeah. can't change it. And as nasty as shit we know it is in real life, you know. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep, yep, yep. People yep. say you the shit. And it's like yep. a thing. So you can't take words meaning because it always be just like, you know, just like it started back in the day when people say, oh, that's bad. That was the first one because when the sum is bad, you're thinking, and in and, and the hood, we knew what that meant. But anywhere else, yeah. people like, what? You know, it's like, yep, that's right. you know, yep. they think it would it for what it was. So words, man, I always learned that, too. That you could, you know, it's about that. Because that's one of the things about, um, you know, time and the generation now with new slang and everything. Everything, every generation has its thing. I, you know, some of the music, is like for now, I love it. Because you got a lot of young musicians getting back on that. Yeah, they, they are. are keeping the tradition alive, and yep. you know, like the snarky puppies and golden, uh, I mean, uh, ghost notes, and you know, different bands like that, and lettuce, and you know, I can think of quite a few. And these bands are, uh, you know, keeping that tradition, but still keeping their originality. And I guess that's what I was getting at with the youth thing just be yeah. you. And because, you know, when we was younger coming up, we didn't have a YouTube and shit to look at. That's right. That's right. And Lenny Whites and Billy Cobhams and all these cats. You know, it was um, we had to go to the source, to the record store and buy the albums and sit there and seriously play the shit and learn it. And that's what I tell them, you know, y'all got it easy because we didn't, you know, when I was 12 or 13, literally, I would hang out with cats 22, 23 that were older than me. But I knew. I was getting something that I couldn't get in school. You know that's what I'm right, saying? That's, right. that's something. Because like they say, I done been around a lot of bad musicians, even some serious motherfuckers. And they are, like I know this brother from Africa, uh, Pate, Jossie, super monster bass player, but he's from Senegal or whatever. And I remember doing a gig with some cats just sitting in, and I remember telling the drummer, there's some things you can't learn in school. And I just remember just being like, wow, okay, he, he got it. You know what I'm saying? So... I, you know, it's a gift and it's a feel. It ain't just playing the notes. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Miles said it best because Miles Davis said, I'm going to have to play fast. 
<laughs> you know, he said you got you know cold yeah. training on that. Yeah, they he didn't even music. want his music classified as that. He just wanted it to be music, you know. Yep. And that's the right. thing, and that's kind of where Funkin' Doug lies, because yep, they're in the category of well, we since you know I am that too. We are in a category of our own because. To me, Funkadelic is whatever the new or any music and all music is, because it always was that. Because it always is <laughs> always George's melting pot yep. of everything with his kitchen sink and the shit. You know what I'm saying? So yep. Yep. Well, there it is, man. Well, well, America Eats is young, and I ain't gonna hold you too long because I know you gotta roll out. But just let me know um, when America Eats is Young came out, and I heard that. And by then, my dad knew I was going to be into that whole funk music. He heard me playing shit goddamn on Sunday morning. He said, listen, you don't got to go to church today. I can see where you are because I was practicing, right? And wow. He actually said that to you, though? That's he would have loved him. My dad, my sister, God-fearing minister, my dad minister, I was always the different one because he knew I was a doctor and I was into that thing. So he used to just let me go, right? And when yeah. I was able to start making a little money buying all of that Funkadelic music um, and I started listening to that one album um, mm -hmm. America Eats Is Young I heard so many elements of what you just brought up brother mm -hmm. on that album gospel, um, jazz blue, funk, rock um, you know, rockabilly um, you know, there was so yeah. much there. country and western I mean, yeah. they were hard yeah. players yeah. they had um they had Symphony on there. Well, that album is uh is monumental for a lot of reasons. Um, because I was into when I was five, I was I had already got turned on to the first funk. That was my first experience when I was literally uh five, and uh, shit turned me out. So <laughs> my uncle, who was a hippie, he was just always give me another one. You know, sometimes we would fight over him, and <laughs> it would be kind of deep. So that's when I started buying my own with my grandmother later on. But I was so into that. But America East is Young was one of those albums. It took me kind of a minute because it was weird. It sounded like Sesame Street. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when I first heard it with Bernie, and, and Bernie would be in tune with that because, you know, all that stuff was kind of like uh, another quick story that people might not know about me. is really deep. The first time I saw, speaking of Sesame Street, Stevie Wonder do Superstition on Sesame Street. Right. It blew my entire mind. I was probably three. Wow. Four. And wow. that's when I knew what I wanted to do really in real life. Like, I want to be, because I had a drum set at five. You know, I did a Keith Moon and tore it up and beat him up and. They yeah. didn't last a day, the little J.C. Penny shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I and then it, I didn't get another real drum set till I took the guy's drum set down the street who was used, and he was going to throw it in the garbage, you know what I'm saying? And I ended up yeah. coming home with it. And uh, the next thing I know, you know, my dad got heads. I started, like, the raw way. Like, I had a drum set with no heads just set up. Right. And, uh, and then I started playing a lot of Parliament records and stuff, which also helped with my timing, which I want to implement that. A lot of drummers, you know, play the records and, and music and drum machines and all these things because it does help with your timing. And timing is very important when you're playing drums, regardless of all the chops and shit you got. You got to have placement for all that. If you don't have the proper placement, then all that shit don't mean anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, That's right. I'm glad you said that. that. <laughs> That's very important. That's extremely. Because, you know, a lot of cats, like you said, they can chop it up. When I hear a lot of the new gospel stuff out, and I'm like, okay, it's nice, it's beautiful, but you didn't let it breathe at all. Now, I don't never knock nobody, but right. you know, coming up like you, you know, you heard stuff and it was impeccable. That stuff breathed, and and you are part of one of the greatest bands ever on this planet, if not the greatest. So let's not sell that short because no, that's yeah. what Funkadelic is. Man, I did, I did my homework. I did my homework, and that's one of the things I implemented with my live playing with them. Which helped, and then sometimes it didn't. But I still, at least for me to know, and I still have some more studying to go back and do because uh, a lot of them mm -hmm. early Funk Doug songs, I never really played them uh, with the band, let alone them. So, you know, like songs like Can You Get To That? And, and uh, yeah. you know, I want to know. Actually, I'm not, let me take that back. When I was in ninth grade, my first band, this brother, uh, he was young, man, 16. 
virtuoso guitar player. And I came up like that. I mean, this kid was like a Al, uh, Alan Holsworth or some shit, or Al Demiola. And he was 16. Me and my buddy who's in town now, he was the bass player. We were just talking about him. He was the band director for the Neville Brothers, my brother David Johnson. So I'm going to see him later, later today. And we're going to chop it up. But we was just talking about how great Austin was. And when we were in ninth grade, we were playing Super Stupid in, in my basement. And the Maggot Brain just liked the record. And uh, he could play that shit for real, man. This kid is like – and then I remember Clip hearing a, a tape of him later, a four-track tape. And he was like, man, who was that? And I was like, oh, this kid Austin I worked with. He's like, man, he sounds like an articulate blackbird. Now, what is an articulate blackbird? That's a hell of a statement. Oh, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. So, yeah. but yeah, yeah, man, it's super good to talk with you, man, and chop it up. And I'm going to let you chop it up. Man, all man, man. Again, bump from the front seat, Mr. Gabe Gonzalez. He's going to come back on the show with us many, many times. I want to thank you. I appreciate oh, man. you. Thank you. I love you. And I'm working on some new stuff. I'm gonna be sending you some of my older stuff to remix some of that. Uh, you know, with, with I'm looking Instagram. forward to it. You, you got the email. <laughs> Do what you want with it. Again, oh, yeah. thank you. Um, oh, thank you. Shot that you want to tell people out there today. Make it a short, sweet, quick one, man. And then I'm gonna let you get out of here. Uh, I just know, you know, everybody. I love all y'all. Everybody that tune in. Everybody that don't tune in. Uh, you know, it's all love. You know. Uh, I'm just thankful and, you know, that I have a platform and a voice to speak some of my views and opinions and musical tastes onto the world because the world is a lot bigger than uh, we think musically. So I just try to present that and get a chance to showcase people's new music that they won't be able to hear on any other stations or Internet stations yet until, you know, they get around to it. So, you know, that's it. And y'all make sure y'all check me out every Wednesday on P4 Radio, Godzilla Radio. Yo, and that's uh, Wednesdays, 10 to 1. And also, I'm on mixes with Robert Denson Austin. She's on every Sunday morning from 10 to 12.30 now. And she's been burning it up doing her thing. And, you know, you can catch me doing a few exclusives for Keith on Fridays and whoever else, you know. And uh, that, there it is. And I got a new new Enema Squad we working on. Still coming out. Uh trying to get it out to y'all greatest shits. <laughs> I and, love that. Uh, I so love that. I'm trying to get it, yeah, featuring, like, uh, I got a lot of people. Danny Bedrosian just did some stuff on there for me. Norwood from Fishbone, uh, Steve Boy, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I could go on. But uh, Mike Hampton. So, yeah, there it is, man. So y'all right, stay bro. tuned. Y'all can catch me on my Instagram, Gabe Gonzalez, or Lowercase, or on Facebook, Gabe Gonzalez. My fan book page or Facebook, Gabe Gonzalez. Till then, I salute y'all. Peace. Peace out, bro. Love you, man. Thank you. All right, man. Again, hanging out today with my funk brother, Mr. Gabe Gonzalez. Phenomenal spirit. Beautiful soul. Uh, Entertainment-wise, top of the charts. Uh, man, love, much respect. And I'm going to get you on some nappy head stuff soon. <laughs> Dug right, it up. Man. Let's you do that. Keep it easy, man. I talk, Let's I do talk that. to you later. All right, uh, y'all. Yo, man, that was beautiful. Let me tell you something. That brother, uh, I love that brother from the bottom of my soul, bottom of my heart, man. That's a good brother right there. Um, you know, and like I said, I told my personal story at the top of the show. People are gracious enough to come on and hang out with me on Fun From The Front Seat. Um, you know, and, and I'm always grateful to, to, to know all these people and, and be able to connect with them on a personal level. Um, and, you know, we share our personal growth um, and, and personal um, accomplishments and achievements and things that, that you know, we're doing to, to help keep funk alive. Um, I'm going to give a few shout outs today. Number one, uh, my main man producer, Mr. Mark Lee, the man behind the glass. Um, you know, we joke a lot and kid a lot, but without producers, um and sponsors, Mr. Lynn Shepard at the dollar store, and go to IBM.TV, click on the big green circle, save yourself some money. Um, you don't have to really shop in the time of COVID. You can go on the dollar store and IBM.TV and pick up, I don't know, well over 4,000 products. So we have to give um, shouts out to the people that help make the station at IBM run. Um, a special shouty to David Brooks, um, again, working with Nappy at Funk Army. He does the website. Curtis Wilcox, um, you know, I call him the boss. Um, I trademarked that nickname for you, Curtis. So, yes, I want money from that. <laughs> Miss Pat Diori, Aquarius Rising, they take care of our artwork. They take care of our cards for Nappy Head Funk Army. 
all the fans out there, all the DJs, Philly Phil, um, Keith Jackson, P-Funk Radio, um, M Mr. Vincent, all, all the people that started and continue to do this thing, you know, Robin and, you know, Larry Funkster Jones, you know, and, um, you know, again, Mr. Gabe Gonzalez on Wednesday nights, all the people that help keep this funk alive um, is, is why a lot of us are making it through these tough times. Because when we get on that thread on a, on a Wednesday night or on a Tuesday night with Philly Phil, um, uncut funk on the funk bus or on a, on a, on a Saturday or a Friday night with Keith Jackson, P-Funk Radio. That's family. That's love. Like Gabe said before, that's family. P-Funk is a family. It's a way of life. Um, George took nothing and made something out of it. Bootsy said, always keep it on the one. Hey, Bootsy, I Peppermint Patty. And don't forget, October 23rd, Bootsy Collins birthday bash and I am and I have been honored to be a club funketeer ambassador first time I ever got any kind of funk anything and believe me I carry that on my shoulder is very spiritual and, and it's a, it's a reward uh, I guess like Gabe said you know you earn something after you put so many miles in um, again please wear your mask um, please you know um, make sure you have hand sanitizer I'm not going to go negative because y'all know how we do on this show. We always go on the up. Power of the one. Um, let's not hate because someone that we, we, we know to be not for us um, is sick, could be sick, could not be sick. We don't know the truth. But let's just focus on what we can be as better people today. Um, that's why I love doing this show. And thank you, IBM, for, for allowing me to have this format. Um, because it's a cable show, and I can say what I want. But I'm not really down to say a lot of negative stuff because I don't need that energy around me. As you guys know, I'm healing, you know, from my fourth shoulder um, operation, my, my third replacement, okay? And it's because of all you fans out there that touch brace with me. Love you, Dr. Brooks. All you fans out there have always been uplifting to me, has, have always dropped me a kind word, has always um, been a kindred funk spirit to me. A lot of people, you know, that, that know um, what I do, whatever, you've always been supportive. And I appreciate all of that from each and every one of you. Even if I don't hear from you, it's okay. I know you back there somewhere and I love you. I got to make sure that my people in Australia, you know, Carmen, I love you. Wendy, I love you. Uh, my girl, Tanny Soul Sister, Germany, I love you. Steady Groove, what's up? I love you. Um, and all my people, you know, we usually do a roll call and I'm going to get to that at the end of the show. But where we are now today, um, and I'm going to get into this tomorrow. Tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow, I got my man Bill coming on. Um, he's a DC correspondent. And tomorrow's show on Funk Music with Zach, we're going to really chop it up about some of this political stuff that we're hearing. And again, it's not going to be negative. So tune in and check it out. Um, you know, tomorrow, you know, it's not going to really be about the music. It's going to be about how the environment we're in has affected the music we need to do. You know, so it'll be an interesting show tomorrow on Funk Music with Zach at 12 o'clock on IBM.TV. Uh, mad shouts out to everybody who tunes in to this show, Funk from the Front Seat. What's up, Curtis? You my man, bro. I love you. Ah, yes. I love it. <laughs> Curtis Wilcox, my man. Phil and Phil, what's up, bro? Another one down there in Texas. I hope you're staying safe. I love you. Um, all these brothers and sisters, man, that help keep the funk alive have always been there for me. And that's only a personal note. And, and I love you all for that. I get so giddy and happy. People think, um, you know, I'm lifted from some other stuff. But I'm really not. I'm just lifted because I'm a true funk head. If you cut me open... All you're going to see is funk, and I'm going to just leave. I'm going to leave it at that. But what I was going to say, in these times that we're in, we need each other now more than ever. Um, if you're around somebody right now, you can hug them and kiss them. By all means, do that. Because put on some P-Funk. Put on some Mother's Finest. Put on some Bootsy Collins. Put on some Larry Graham. Put on some Chaka Khan. Put on some Earth, Wind & Fire. Definitely this week, make sure you guys play some Tower of Power. Because we lost one of the mighty pillars of the Tower of Power. The bass player, Phenomenal Cat. Um, we're losing so many great 
artists and musicians, um, you know, and entertainers and actresses, you know, and great philanthropy people out there in the world, the, the Ruth Gade, Bader Ginsburgs of the world. You know, we're, we're losing Mother Earth, the planet, is trying to tell us something. 2020, vision, hindsight. And I, I want to make sure before I forget, mad shouts out to my man Lee Cooper down in Florida. Um, and mad shouts out to Al Rashad down in Florida. Um, I had them both on the show a while ago. They both just dropped some new music. And you'll see me post it on my Facebook page. Whenever my friends or family drop some new music, I automatically um, drop it on my page. Um, John Willis, the Groovalicious Project, he just dropped something out. Eric J., um, he just dropped something out. Oh, you was at the gym? Philly Phil, hey, keep working out. Work out a little bit for me, bro. Don't worry. You can rerun the show. It'll be on, on um, IBM. I'll rerun the show today. But yeah, man, so, you know, Anybody that got something new, I'm going to try to promote it. But getting back to taking care of what we got to do, you know, make sure that we take care of each other. What's up, Sonia? I love you, sweetheart. I love you, too. <laughs> I love it when, when people chime in and I can check them out because it, 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 it makes me, gives me a chance to tell them I love them. Um, because it's hard for me on the thread to type since my shoulder ain't quite right yet. But last night was a lot of fun. Every night on the thread. Every day, Funkadelic, P-Funk, Parliament Funkadelic, Bootsy, Club Funketeers, join the Club Funketeers. Um, you won't go wrong. You get a lot of swag with the Club Funketeers, Peppermint Patties, constantly doing all kinds of good things with Bootsy Collins and his foundation. Donna Sneed, Benevolent Funk, I love y'all. Otis Hawk, um, Q down in Georgia, I'm um, doing stuff. Next Exit. Um, I love y'all all. You know, Next Exit, I had them on um, a couple of weeks last week. Um, you know, uh, Benevolent Funk and, and all the stuff that they're doing. Make sure that we all continue to support each other. It doesn't take a lot. Every now and then, if you got a couple of dollars, make sure you go buy Enema Squad's new CD. Make sure you go purchase music from Next Exit. Make sure you get a hat, you know. Um, you know, from Benevolent Funk and 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 Bo Boogie uh, Munson's Foundation. These are real, living, breathing things that are happening right now. The money loops back into the community, and you're helping out a fellow funketeer. You know, and that's all we're really trying to say. Please make sure. Um, yeah, it is. It is slamming Philly Phil. That joint is slamming. Yeah, please make sure we don't turn on each other because that's what. The powers that be want. And I'm not talking about the presidency, y'all. I'm talking about the people that own the color blue, like Chris Rock said. They're the ones. Remember, on this chessboard of life, we, you, me, we are the pawns, okay? Pawns always go first. They're on the front line. So we have to take care of each other, nurture each other, love each other, make sure our families are safe, make sure that we don't spend money frivolously on crazy things that we don't need, especially in the black community where we already have, um, you know, poverty issues and economic issues. Make sure, prepare now for tomorrow. That's what my father used to always tell me. And God forbid, sometimes I wish I would have listened to him more. Make sure, um, support, you know, Things in your community that you know are righteous, uh, and it's not a religious thing. It's just about trying to help someone else. Reach down. I can't tell you how many people reached down and pulled me back up. I wouldn't be sitting here today if it wasn't for a lot of y'all out there because people reached down and pulled me up. So that's what this show is all about, positivity. If you got a birthday today, I love you. If you have an anniversary today, I love you. If you lost somebody in your life and they're close to you, know that I'm praying for you and I'm praying for them. Um, if you're out and about in the world, please make sure you stay safe. Don't, don't, don't get caught up into the negativity because we're in for a much tougher battle. Let me tell you, it's coming. We're in for a much tougher battle. And I'm not talking about COVID. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So above all, vote. Above all, you got to vote. Um, make sure you know what's happening in your local elections. Very important. If you have a mail-in ballot, you must sign it and it must be witnessed before it will count. If you send it in without signing it and without a witness, it will get kicked 
back to you. I've seen that happen here in North Carolina all this week. They're getting spit back because people simply didn't take the time to read it. Please, people, take the time, read it, sign it, witness it. And if you're not going in person, which I am starting next week, but send it in. But they're going to send it back to you if it's not filled out right. So you got to, got to, got to, got to make sure you take care of our business. We can, I love the thread, man. They're giving love to each other. I love that, y'all. We can overcome this thing because we're the strongest people on the planet. Still we rise, no matter what they do to us. Still we rise. I'm going to leave y'all with that. I love y'all. It's been a fantastic show today. My man Gabe Gonzalez. My man Mark behind the glass. Come on out, Mark. Glad to come on out. And that was a great show. Gabe was giving all kinds of great information. Was definitely a lot of great wisdom. And I was really feeling those heartfelt stories that he shared with y'all about uh, his own life, uh, y'all's connection, things of that nature. I am a little bit jealous of Gabe, though, because you're going to have to talk to Gabe because Gabe said that one of his best friends or somebody he's going to be dealing with later on today is a music director, I think I heard, for the Neville Brothers. And y'all know yeah. I'm a blues head, just like you a funk head. So I'm sitting there going like, I got to talk to my man, Zach, so we can find out how we can get this brother that is somehow connected with the Neville Brothers here on I- I- TV. I'll ask Gabe. We'll get him on. You know, so, I, I asked him for a few requests already. But, you know, um, people, as they say, they, they take the time when they can. They make the time. And believe me, that brother sincere. He'll make the time because he knows how much I love him, you know, as my brother, my funk brother um, and musician, you know. Um, and, and everything happens. And you and Mark, you and I was talking about this, even with Gabe before the show, about life itself. We can sit here on a Saturday with all our fans and Sonya and David Brooks and Curtis and Philly Phil and, you know, Keith Jackson, everybody tuning in. And we can just feel so good, you know, listening to P-Funk Radio all week and, and, and just playing the music. We can feel so good. That's the one thing I like and love about music. Not because I'm a musician. And play it, but because oh, I love you too, Sonia. Thank you, sweetheart. I really do. But because music is the universal language. Oh yeah, Gabe. Gabe is a funk historian, no doubt, um, and, and 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 an exceptional funk historian. But yes, music is the universal language. And Mark, you and I talk about this all the time. You you could be from another country or whatever. Right. Germany, France. And an American sitting in the same place, don't speak the same language. But you put on a song that we all know, we're all going to do this. Yep. <laughs> and that's the universal thump, heartbeat. Like Bob Marley said, one love. That's what that is. Boosie Collins says it. The power of the one, you know. And we're going to be running his video twice tomorrow. So y'all tune in and check that out again, the power of the one. But, you know. That thing that we have that connects us as human beings, not skin color, not money, like Gabe said, wasn't about the money. That's the thing the creator wants us to get next to. That's the thing. That's the thing. We have to have to deep inside understand we're here for a higher purpose. You know what I'm saying? There, There is no reason why we cannot, as Donna Sneed, benevolent funk would say, be benevolent. <laughs> Love each other. You know, that's what funk is. I'm blessed to be in the funk family. Trust me, all y'all out there, believe me. I love y'all so much. I am so fortunate to have found this music and, and be part of it um, in my own little small way, just to paint the canvas, man. Um, it's beautiful. You know, we're hanging out, just chilling. Um, thank you, Mark. You've been a fantastic, fantastic producer as always. Thank you, IBM.TV. All the Funk fans out there, keep tuning in every week. We're going to run this thing until we run it, until we run it. So it's just going to keep running. You know what I'm saying? I'll be around for a long time, even when the live music comes back, which I hope soon. Stay safe. Wear your mask out there. And know that um, Funk, from the front seat, we love you. Peace.
Yep, uh, Zach is out of here, and he's doing a great job. We definitely appreciate him as well. But I've got to get ready to bounce off as well because we've got another show that's getting ready to happen as well. So if y'all enjoyed the conversation that was going on with Zach, you know you've got another one coming your way very shortly with Tish Oakley also. So definitely we're going to bounce over there and check out Tish and what she's got to say. But Zach is over there rocking that music, and we're going to wrap this one up. But we're going to engage with some more great conversation with Tish and all of that. So another amazing show, Zach. Got to thank you for that great job that you were doing. All right, brother. I'm out. Love you all. Bye. Fun, fun, fun. See, IBM.TV. Check it out. Peace. I'm out, y'all. Later, 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 later. Stay safe. Love you all out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing but the funk. Power of the one. You know, the funk don't always give you what you want. No, the funk don't always give you what you want, but it. You know the funk don't always give you what you want, but it'll give you what you need. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know the funk don't always give you what you want, but it'll give you what you need. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We never.